Well, so much for not knowing how much uh, effort is going to go in because yesterday I fired up the tiller and it is running for me with some new gas in it and I went crazy. <laughs> The bed along the driveway was extended and this is going to be used because this new area here isn't going to be heavily amended and it's going to get pelted with some sun pretty early. Uh, herbs don't need a whole lot to keep them going. So that's the plan for this area. I'm going to try to take advantage of the sprinkler system that runs up here and and get as much of this area here planted so I'm just not watering weeds in a sandy driveway. I went ahead and took out some of the lychee and papaya trees and citrus trees and put them in the ground to free up some pots so I could get some more stuff planted. But we got lots of nice blooming going on and growth. A lot more volunteers showing up in the beds this had been, um, this had some basil in it last year, so they, they're popping here amongst the endive and Swiss chard and lettuce. I did another collection on the lettuce as well. Now this area, uh, I extended this and as you can see, there are little divots with darker soil in there and um, butterflies just love poop they love when I put the compost tea down and uh, fresh poop so anyway back to this area I did some reading on that cucumber the first round of cucumber I've started and it said that uh, it does well having some afternoon shade so the spot out back is going to get pelted most of the day and this area gets the early morning sun and afternoon shade. So this is the spot. I put some of those cucumber seeds in pots and uh, to big pots so they could remain in there but I also have the, the sprout started. And next week I think we're going to start getting into consistent 60s temperatures at night and they'll be put in here. And then the pots will be brought over. That way I'll have lots of specimens to do the, the hand pollination. Make sure they get a good cross. Did more tilling. Like I said, I'm going to move some of the cilantro too. This gets a lot of afternoon sun. As well as the cilantro that's over here and the Florence fennel. And the Florence fennel likes cooler weather. So I'm going to transplant those later over to this side of the driveway where it gets the um, afternoon shade. And there's the smaller of the citrus trees. I put those here. I think I'm going to put a couple more in this area. And then I have to figure out what's going to happen with those apple trees. I might put them, uh, put them in this area. Uh, behind that white bucket that's there to keep the little baby lemon balm be it teeny tiny they're only like you know a half an inch tall but I put lemon balm back there I um, got down in here in the just out water wild patch lots of new sprouts coming up and ran the tiller all throughout here with the exception of that because that's where the mistake took place with the cubed potatoes. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I did another trench. So there are now three trenches of the uh, of the potato skins. And as soon as I know that I'm going to have more consistent night temperatures, I'm going to take this leaf litter away from the pineapple. They're still green in here and firmly root it. So that's a really good sign. I don't know if they're going to produce uh, good fruit or, um, or any at all. But I'm starting to see the blossom, the buds on the wild blackberries. 
that were put in here last year. So if there's blossoms, there are going to be berries. And I froze uh, over 50 pounds of the wild blackberries last year. And I'm down to my last uh, two cups of them. That's how many berries I ate over the winter plus the jam. So this year I'll do more frozen and less of the preserves. Peas, there's growth. You could see that, you know, they are, they are growing. And I put in a direct sow here of um, black Hopi, the black green Hopi squash. They were a really, really great flavor. And like a lot of those bigger squash, they just, the vines don't produce that heavily, not compared to the uh, pepos, the pepo family, the summer squash, the thin skin squash. If you pick them young, they're gonna keep on uh, firing those baby squash out, much like beans. The, the plant wants, and cucumbers, the plant wants to produce a mature pod to ensure that it's gonna, you know, leave its genetic legacy. And if you keep picking those babies, it, it just wants to spit out more and more to make sure that it gets its job done. So I'm gonna put in a lot of the black Hopi. And I did a crook neck yellow squash for my Pepo. And the black Hopi is mixed. -a. So I have a Maxima to pick out and a Mashgata to pick out. Uh, for my squash families. I don't know what I'm going to do quite yet. But these beds are all cleared and amended and I wet them down a little bit to keep the amendments, to get them going and, and keep the dust down. And I'll come back through here with a hand cultivator and go back through to get out any more of the, the roots, the weed roots. But here's what I said. I got that tiller going and went through this area one time yesterday and then lightly raked it. This area is pretty much clean. I'll go through it one more time. And then that big back area. And these areas that are underneath the pine trees and closer to the trees, I go a little bit heavier on the lime. They're typically, the soil gets a little bit more acidic with all of the, the pine straw and anywhere near trees and shrubbery. Uh, so the heavier the lime and then it's going to sit for a little while before anything goes into it and I'll amend it, you know, a couple days before transplants or direct sow. I opted to leave this area go and I'm going to do this by hand because you could still see all of the, the basil plants that had been here. So there's going to be plenty of basil volunteers showing up here and Lord only knows what else. And then in the center here, I opted to leave that go because of the amount that this just happened to be the biggest cluster of the uh, Dimu endive and uh, I'll put that in a, I'll find another shady spot for that. There's the bear girl. I had spotted a, um, a picture of a Newfoundland dog and it, the characteristics are an awful lot like Bear, except she's smaller. She's very sweet and her coat doesn't uh, get wet very easily. And she wants to hurt us. You know, she, when we're walking, she wants to um, keep us in a tight group. But anyway, okay, so that's my story. I'm gonna put some more seeds in pots and I guess it's a go. The big, the big decision will be as to how much money I'm going to invest if I'm going to have some topsoil and compost, mushroom compost brought in again this year and start shopping around for that or maybe I could find somebody who just wants to get rid of some goat, chicken or um, horse manure and, and do a nice heavy layer on these, on these spots. All right. I will uh, keep you guys updated as the stuff sprouts and goes into the ground. I got my work cut out for me. Muscles are sore and it feels great. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Bye.